welcome back students so yesterday we have seen uh, physical properties of metals and non metals based on their uh, characteristics and today we are moving on to chemical properties of metals and non metals in our chapter number 7 metals and non metals in science subject okay so when we consider chemical properties uh, we have to go with the electronic configuration electronic configuration in last chapter we all have seen that the atomic number the number of electrons and the electronic configuration will decide with what the reaction will take place of certain elements or not in case of say sodium where they have sodium is a metal they have 11 electrons and in the klm shell it will be divided in the way the electronic configuration will be 2 8 and 1 so finally 1 is the valence electron present in sodium so in this case when sodium will give away sodium will give away one electron there will be one positive charge on sodium because the negative electron is given away and a positive ion is going to develop on that element okay so that way there will be two and eight and one will be shut off that is negative charge will be released similarly in magnesium also if you consider in magnesium there are uh, 12 electrons that can be divided in the electronic configuration 2 8 2 so this valence electrons will be given away and in case of magnesium if you consider magnesium will get plus Two, two ch positive charges it will get, and two electrons are given away. So that way, metals are gaining positive charge on them. On the other hand, if you consider non-metals, in case of non-metals, suppose if you take a example of say chlorine. Chlorine is having electrons in it electronic configuration 2 8 and 7 17 electrons it is having and there are seven valence electrons okay so only one electron is needed to complete its octet in that case you see chlorine is going to get one electron it will get one electron to complete its octet and therefore chlorine will be gaining a negative charge on it because one negatively charged electron it is accepting to complete its octet so non metals you see will be having negative charge on it ions negative ions are developed on the other hand metals will be having positive charge development on them one more example we can consider that is of oxygen oxygen you see the electronic configuration of oxygen is 2 and 6 so it is having two less electrons in its outermost orbit which needed to be an octet so oxygen is going to take oxygen will take two electrons therefore on oxygen there will be two negative ions developing because the negatively charged uh, electron it is uh, going to accept because it wanted to complete its outer shell that is the octet should be completed so you can understand that metals are releasing giving away one electron or whatever electron possible 
and non metals are taking electrons so therefore on that basis metals are known to uh, gain positive charge because they are giving away negatively charged electron and non metals are known to accept the electron and therefore negative charges are ions are developed on it so positively charged ion will be developed on metals and negatively charged ion are developed on uh, non metals and positively charged ions we call it as cation and negatively charged ions sorry uh, positively charged ions will be will term as cation and anions on the non metals now considering the reactions that are taking place with metals and non metals they can be classified on the basis of their chemical properties also like the physical properties that we have seen earlier in case of metals you see they will react with oxygen metals react with oxygen to form metal oxide we have seen iron reacting with oxygen that is present in the air and getting rusted so rust is an example of metallic oxide this metal oxide will then in turn react with acid to form salt and water okay this metal oxide in turn reacts with acid to form salt and water metal again if you consider uh, can react with dilute acid also to give salt and hydrogen gas is released in those reactions okay so these are the chemical properties of metals on the other hand if you consider non metal chemical properties non metals will react with oxygen to form non metallic oxides and non metals you see will not react with acid if we dilute acid they will not at all react there is no reaction found in case of non metals reacting with dilute acids okay so these are certain uh, chemical properties on a comparative degree of metals and non metals what you have to do is uh, certain metal uses we can discuss next that noble metals are also there among the elements noble metals such as gold silver platinum palladium rhodium are the noble metals they occur in nature in the elemental state they are not reacting with anyone they occur in nature in the elemental state why because gold which is 100% pure we call it 24 karat pure gold is soft we can press it and it will change its shape as a result the ornaments made from pure gold bend you must have seen your uh, ornaments of your mother which are made up of pure gold if you press it will change its shape the bangles and all or break due to the pressure on the other hand gold smiths uh, mix with this gold pure gold some amount of copper or silver so that it becomes 22 karat gold means copper or silver is added to it the karat is changed where the percent of gold will come to 91.66% so it's not going to be pure 24 karat 100% gold in that case you see it will not be as soft and will not get broken but by just applying any pressure so uh, these such uh, noble metals are uh, having certain uses we all know actually so it's easy to remember gold silver and platinum are used for making ornaments then uh, silver is used in many of the medicines in chavancrash and all you must have heard about because it is having antibacterial property it helps our body to develop in a way that uh, we can fight with certain bacterial infections 
Gold and silver are also used for making metals. Gold and silver are also used for making few electronic devices. Certain chips in our laptops, mobiles are being made out of them. Then platinum, palladium metals are also used as catalysts. Catalysts, what they do? They help in uh, reacting, making a reaction between two things. Sometimes they need a catalyst uh, between person to perform this reaction. That purpose, platinum and palladium is also used. Now, about purity of gold, if you talk, we have 24 carat, that is 100% pure gold. Then we have 22 carat, where gold is only 91.66%. Then 18 karat gold is also available in which diamonds are fitted. Such type of jewelry which is having diamonds in them uh, will be mostly made in 18 karat gold. Uh, it is only 75% gold. Then 14% gold is having 58.33% gold. 12 karat gold is having only 50% gold and 50% some other metal is there. And 10 carat is also available, and it uh, has a percent of gold is only 41.66%. So, the purity of gold we are only mix uh, distracting because we want the ornaments or instrument that we are going to make to be in a very pure form. Okay, now corrosion is occurring uh, due to some reactions that are taking place in nature. Gases in the air react with metals uh, in presence of moisture to form metal compound. Okay, uh, iron, if you don't paint it or it is not a galvanized iron, in that case you see uh, it will get rusted and weak also. This rusted iron is of no use most of the time. It breaks very easily. And it is occurring because it is a kind of corrosion. Corrosion is occurring because oxygen in the air is reacting with iron and uh, the presence of moisture and destructing it. Similarly, one best known example of rusting or um, what I should say corrosion is the Statue of Liberty that is placed in New York City. Actually, it is uh, in the sea near New York. So, water body may it is uh, installed. The original surface, you know, is made up of copper. But now what happened? It started looking green in color. Why? Because green colored copper carbonate has been formed by the reaction of copper with the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and moisture in the air and uh, this is also an example of corrosion okay then uh, what about alloys alloys again time and again i am telling you that alloys are mixture of certain elements so it's a homogeneous mixture of two or more elements or a homogeneous mixture metal with non-metal is also available. Sometimes a uh, mixture of metal and non-metal is also being done. For example, in steel, we have carbon. Carbon is a non-metal and uh, it is mixed with uh, nickel, chromium and iron to give it hardness. Okay. So alloys are made by mixing the constituent element as per the requirement. For example, in stainless steel that we use in our homes. All the utensils in your mother's kitchen, you must have seen that uh, mostly are stainless steel. So in stainless steel, alloy it is. Stainless steel is an alloy. And what is it made up of? It is an alloy of iron, then carbon. You all know that carbon is a non-metal plus chromium. 
and nickel. You see, chromium and nickel are added to give it a shine. It won't get rusted also, and it is shining. For that purpose, uh, these two extra metals are also added in stainless steel. And the alloy of bronze also, you all know that copper and tin are mixed up over there. And uh, an alloy. So it is a homogeneous mixture. We can't separate very easily iron, carbon, chromium, and nickel from stainless steel. Similarly, from bronze, you cannot separate copper and tin. Now, our Kutub Minar also, uh, which is in Delhi, it was made in 1500, uh, about 1500 years ago. The pillar is uh, lustrous. There is one iron pillar. It is lustrous even after so many years. What is the reason? Because ancestors made an alloy. It was not pure iron. They added some other metals to keep it um, from rusting, avoid rusting, as well as the shine should always be present there. So, so much centuries ago it was made, but people knew how to make an alloy. And it contains small proportion of carbon, silicon and phosphorus mixed with iron so that it is not getting rusted and not losing its shine. So certain such examples are present in our history also. And uh, here we end our uh, chapter number seven. And the uh, next class, we are going to discuss question answers based on this chapter. So by all of you, thank you.